Today, we're going to be making our wonderful bash prompt look very good. So you might have a bash prompt that looks something like this. Kind of ugly. I mean, you can blow it up and, eh, you know, I just you lose a lot of quality of life. You can't alias stuff or there's no aliases set up, which means shorthand for things. Uh, so first off, let's just install our font. Uh, that's the biggest thing. Now, when it comes to fonts, I really like anything with nerd fonts. You might be thinking, how do I install all the different things to make it all work? Some people, like you read instructions online, they're like, install font awesome, then install power line, then install this. And honestly, if you watch a video of mine from like four or five years ago, hell, I think I was doing it that way. So no knock against you. You don't know what you don't know. But there's a better way. Just install a nerd font. So go in here. You can download it manually, install it through here. I personally like Cascadia Cove, Fire Amano, probably JetBrains if I'm doing programming. A lot of times I set that. Uh, if I'm trying to save space, Ozveka is amazing. And then my personal favorite is a Meslo LG font. I just feel like it's just, oh, just the chef's kiss for fonts. So come in here, set that in your config file. I, I am using Alacrity here. If you're using Kitty, it would be a Kitty and then the config file. So right here, you can see I'm setting my font right here, Meslo LGS Nerd Font Mono. And you might be like, how do you figure out the font family? Obviously, if you're using the GUI tool, it'll just be a drop down and you select it. And that's easy enough. Now, if you're manually installing these, make sure you copy them to dot here. I'll just do a FC list. Every Linux thing has an FC list. And then it spits out all your things. So you can go, oh, okay. Well, where's my mess low fonts? You can see I in manually install these in dot local share fonts. So your home folder dot local share fonts is where you should be installing these font files, these TTF files. However, if you're on Arch, you could just do uh, a search and just go, hey, uh, what mess low nerd fonts? Ah, this is the package name. So you could just copy this package name, EAS and paste. TTF Meslo Nerd. Man, I can't type today. Uh, so that would install your, your Nerd font directly for you so you don't have to copy them. But after doing that, FC Cache F, this force reloads all of your font cache on any link system. So you can do this remotely. You can do it on your local desktop system. And, you know, sky's the limit. So once you got your cache installed and you, you've installed the font that you were going to use, and it's a nerd font, very important nerd font because you have all these different stuff, uh, emojis and, and different icons, you're, you're going to load back up. Now, your, your font might change a little bit, but for the most part, it's still going to look ugly like this. I created a script to auto install Starship. Use your custom font. Uh, do a curl. Uh, fizzle. This is cap sensitive, so lowercase f, lowercase s, and then a capital SL, christitus.com forward slash Linux, and then we pipe it to sh. This is going to launch into the Linux utility. From here, we're just going to pick bash. So right here, we'll click that, say yep, continue. It's going to go through, install anything. Since I've already used this, it will install the font. It will install Starship, it will install Zoxide, and then it will copy this all directly to where it should be, which is great. So if you don't want to change anything, you don't want to do anything, this will take care of pretty much everything. I just want to show the manual install, but also show this automated way as well. So if we close out, you'll see, oh, my prompt's back. So what kind of cool features do we get with this? Well, we just added something called uh, yay F. Someone on the live stream said, hey, Titus, you should use this alias. And I did. I was like, oh, that's that's really cool. So then if you're we looking for our Meslo font, oh, there's the nerd font Meslo that I wanted to grab. Uh, what about um, like fire a code? Oh, yeah, look at that. There's the fire a code. Mon it shows you which where's it coming from. Is it from the AUR? Is it from the regular package manager? Just just a good quality of life feature. So let's uh, quit out of that. And let's go through what sets all this up because there's a lot of quality of life here. We have copy with progress bar. So instead of just doing regular copy, you can do with an extra P and then you get a progress bar. This is really good when using a large file for a copy. 
but you know, just little little tiny things. Let's uh, let's look at our bash RC, which this is where all the magic happens. So you'll know how uh, what all quality of life, and also to actually add your own quality of life too, which is really important. So on launch, if it finds fast fetch is installed, well, fast fetch, if you're unfamiliar, is this. You may not like that. You might want like a more minimal version of fetch, you know, like obviously don't use Neo fetch that's deprecated, but you know, there's, there's many other smaller condensed fetch packages. I just prefer fast fetch. It's written in C it's fast, hence the name fast fetch. And I like seeing this readout, seeing how long my thing's been installed, how bloated my system is, what kernel I'm currently using, uh, and then some of my theming and going, okay. So it's just at a glance, I can see everything about my system. And honestly, you probably don't need this, but I find just adding it to my fast fetch is nice for people watching me for the first time, kind of knowing, hey, okay, this is a Xeon processor with a 4070. Titus has got some good hardware here. It's gonna, it's gonna be flying. And uh, my system's probably not quite as good as that. And just know it's gonna take a little longer than what he's showing. But let's say you didn't want that. Well, just remove this, these three lines, done, and you won't run fast fetch at all. So then uh, going back through, you have bash completion. We also expand the history size. So it remembers what you type on your bash prompt. So you can go back in history and kind of go back and forth and, and find things. And if you're not familiar with the history command, well, you can just type history and you can kind of see, hey, what's my history look like from here? And you can see all the different things I've been doing in the past and what time I was doing them. And then I can just say, hey, uh, you know what, find this. Or you can even grep history and go, uh, grep system CTL. What commands have I been running? Uh, some pipe wire, so I'm messing with audio a little bit. Land mouse, that's what I'm using to go between multiple PCs. And uh, greet D service is what I'm using to log into the system. Um, so. It's just nice whenever you figure out a command and then going back in history, it, it's just nice to have uh, these exports. Honestly, I don't think you probably should do these here. However, I just like setting them on every single system because this is where they should reside. Um, but teach his own and then setting default editors. Now, some people like Nano. You might want to come in here and remove NeoVim or InVim and replace this with Nano. So you'll always launch Nano uh, because some people haven't learned Vim yet. Just a matter of time. Once you get a little taste of it and you like it, you go through like the Vim tutorial. I'm not going to go on a NeoVim rant, but if you know, you know. <laughs> and uh, let's keep going, though. Alias is really where it kind of comes out. I talked a little bit about these aliases, but typically just a regular CP for just copying a file will give an information and automatically add that dash I flag. Uh, there's some coloring that happens to some of these commands, so it's more readable. Multi-tail and other things, it just kind of expands on. Also shorthand. So instead of doing CD space dot dot, you can just do dot dot to move back a directory. And then other just quality of life. I use LL a lot. So this right here is one of the biggest long listing commands I use all the time, which is so much easier than doing ls space dash f, lowercase l, lowercase s, and ugh, it just, ugh, nobody wants to type all that. So that's why I have all these little aliases. You'll notice rm is alias to trash, verbose. What this does is instead of deleting the file permanently every time you run rm, well, all it does is put it in a trash folder. So then it can be disposed of later and automatically, I think after 30 days, it empties the trash anyways. But there's a lot of times I've used RM on a certain file. I'm like, oh crap, I need that file back. Oh, it's gone forever. No, not on this system. Anything that has this alias with trash CLI, I can bring it back. So just a quality of life on how I use bash terminal. A uh, click base, I actually did a video on this. Now this is Xorg only right now. I haven't converted this to Wayland yet. But essentially what I did is sometimes I do like a VNC where all I have is keyboard input onto there. I don't have shared clipboard. So what ClickBase does essentially is I copies everything in my clipboard. So I have a whole bunch of text. Let's say I take all of this text, I yank it. Well, that's in my clipboard now. 
But instead of having to write all that out and go, okay, I got to go sleep and then alt tab back and forth. No, I just type click paste. I have three seconds to get over to that screen. And then it automatically types out using XDO tool, everything that's in my clipboard directly onto that remote server. So I no longer have to remember commands to copy and paste between uh, remote sessions. It just automatically does it. It's just like magic. Uh, so it kind of a, a cool thing. If you, you're interested in that, I'll try and leave a link or you can just search for click paste on my channel. Uh, Apache log config and PHP config. That's mostly when I'm uh, setting up like LAMP stacks and remote servers and I just want to edit the config really quick. I can just type this command and it'll just edit these files for me. Uh, so that's mostly just remote. I use these commands quite a bit for my GitHub. Gcom and LazyG, this just automatically commits directly to my GitHub repos. Hastebins, another video I've done. This actually copies everything from your clipboard directly into a text file on bin.christitis.com. So then you can share it remotely. Like let's say I make something here and I want to just share it directly to you all. Well, I could just go, you know what? Um, HB bash RC. Boom. You go to that URL you will have my entire bash RC file uh, from the source or any, any text file I feed it. So it just kind of makes things easy to share with everybody. And then just some essential like little aliases. You probably will want to remove these and create your own. I use Landmass, I use Hugo for like my website and things of that nature. And that just makes it a little easier. And then the Starship and Zoxide, that's where a lot of this. Now there is like some bindings that make this cool too. Uh, let's exit here. But control F finding is everything by popularity. What have I used the most on my system in the past year? DWM Titus, which is my XOR config. Funny enough, we're actually in Hyperland here. It's just more of a stripped down version that I enjoy. Um, Linux utility, I've used, uh, gone to that directory a bunch, 40% of the time. 31% of the time I'm in my GitHub directory. And then I was working on like a Linux toolbox. I've kind of condensed this a little bit since and some other miscellaneous projects. But let's say I was like, oh, you know what? I'm working on a Linux book now. What's that look like? And you can see how it limits those down. You're like, all right, let's do it. just take me to the here. And let's pull those changes. All right, cool. Well, we're, we're, we're jamming. And this is just how I get around quality of life, make my bash prompt look good. Let me know what else you do. What did I miss here? And I'll see you in the next one.